Hi guys and welcome. Today we're going to talk about motor controllers, how to safely turn a motor controller on and also I'm going to show you uh, how to protect a motor controller from transient voltage. So uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting video. So these are the VESC motor controllers and they are really prone to getting destroyed. So I destroyed a whole bunch of these uh, VESC motor controllers in the past and the reason they die so easily is because of two reasons. Um, the first one is the capacity moved really far back uh, in the voltage lines. So it was not really connected to the motor controller itself, but the, the capacitor bank was like more separate far further back. So you have a little bit of wiring and inductance in between there. And also another big reason is these old VESCs didn't have a TVS diode. Uh, TVS diodes are pretty uh, substantial, they are pretty much recommended at this point and any company that doesn't produce a VESC without a TVS diode is essentially selling you e-waste because at one point when, you, when you're driving these motor controllers with uh, 12S which they are absolutely rated for according to the data sheet and the marketing material at least um, you're going to eventually destroy them but today I'm going to show you how to upgrade a motor controller that got delivered to you without a TVS diode and add the TVS diode um, afterwards. So the first step is obviously to open this up. This one has a like a uh, warranty void sticker on here. So we're going to get that thing off there. Void our warranty. I don't know if you can see that. That should come up first. Yes, perfect. So the area we are looking for is um, is basically exactly where the capacitor is sitting at. So there's the po there's our positive terminal right here, and there's a negative terminal of this uh, capacitor right here, right? So what we want to do is connect a TVS diode in between some of these pins. I got a bunch of different TVS diodes. So uh, the most important spec of a TVS diode it's, is its breakthrough voltage. And the breakthrough voltage is basically the voltage at which point uh, the, the TVS diode becomes conductive. So the way a TVS diode basically works, it, it usually doesn't conduct any current. It's basically an isolator until uh, a certain voltage is reached and then it starts to be conductive. Um, and can basically protect your electronics. So this one in this case is 62 volts uh, TVS diode. So as soon as the voltage reaches 62 volts, this thing becomes conductive. But I think I even I have a better one. We could use this one. That's how this diode looks under the microscope. But there are actually even better ones out there. So the according to my, they are. 56.7 to 67.3 and 1.5 kilowatts TVS diodes. These look really sick, but I might have to look at the data sheet again because I'm not sure how good of a fit they would be in this case. And that's how they look. Really thick they are. So yeah, I just checked the data sheet and I have to say, they look really good, so I'm going to use these and we're going to solder them on there. And so what I would usually do is now enable the fan um, so that all the solder fumes don't get blown into my face. But uh, that would create a lot of noise and I'm not going to do that so, because that would ruin the video. I think that would work. I want to get my diode somewhere in there. So what I'm going to do now is basically just scratch a little bit. We're going to scratch the, um, the solder mask off. If you are wondering why transient voltages even appear, the simplest explanation is that when energy is stored in the motor coils and wire inductance, when switching off the current you sometimes get short voltage spikes even way above the rated 60 volts of your components. More details on why this happens are linked in the description. So um, now you need to clean that up um, and how do you do that? Basically you take some isopropyl alcohol and I would usually use like a um, just these cotton swabs. 
you definitely want to clean everything off every last bit you have on there yeah i'm really happy with that okay next step um we're actually going to coat this whole thing one really big problem with electronics on uh, small electric vehicles is usually the fact that they're really exposed to the elements of nature so you want to protect your electronics from water one thing i really like is coating um, coating the pcb with some kind of um, protective layer in this case we're going to use 419d from mg chemicals that's an acrylic conformal coating let me show you so let's use this stuff this is great definitely gonna put that onto the pcb Another big failure point I see really often is bad connections. We have these uh, JST connectors on the PCB and right here a few. Especially in like electric skateboards for example, we have a lot of wiggling and vibration and eventually these connectors are going to get loose. So the way to prevent that, basically solder directly your wires to these connections and then put some heat shrink on top of that. That's going to prevent any loose connections. That's also one very big failure point, bad connections. So now water shouldn't be able to cause any damage to the motor controller and, and also this motor controller is now a little bit better protected against transient voltages. But there's still a big issue. If I want to turn this motor controller on, what you will always see, let's, you know, what you will see is this right here. And that's, that's right now welded on there. Let me show you again. So you just saw when turning on the motor controller a really big spark is happening at the contacts. Why is that happening? Well the reason for that is the motor controller when it's completely discharged the capacitors in here basically act like a short circuit for like a few milliseconds as long as they're not charged. So when you connect your voltage to these terminals there's basically infinite amount of amps rushing into these capacitors right here whatever these wires can handle and that's like i don't know 100 200 amps whatever that's a lot of current and that creates this big spark so what you need for that is a so-called anti-spark but the issue is that a lot of anti-sparks on the market don't actually charge up the capacitor slowly but instead just use a mosfet and connect as fast as possible and i've seen a lot of issues with that because they usually dump all the heat into the MOSFETs which very often causes them to die. So what I found was a big issue. I basically tried to fix this issue by creating this thing right here. I called it the price height anti-spark. Let me show you under the microscope. This is the PCB currently. And uh, what this thing does basically is it allows you to slowly charge up the, uh, the VESC to a safe voltage and then it turns on the high current path so that a lot of current can flow. This one is obviously just a PCB right now, but we're going to populate this thing with all the necessary components uh, and I'm going to show you guys this process and go through the whole thing, right? What a lot of people miss out when they're first starting soldering is they're not using enough flux. So what you can see right here is uh, there's very quickly you will see some solder bridges like this one. And sometimes you can get them away like this. But very often, um, especially when there's no flux around, uh, these solder bridges are insanely hard to get rid of. 
Because what you can see right here is when I have like a chip like this, I can, I can just put some solder onto my tip and just drag this tip across all the pins. And you can see right there, it perfectly creates a nice and even connection to all the pins. And that just works perfectly. Now I'm going to show you like what's the, the actual, the real world difference between using, uh, not using a anti-spark and using an anti-spark. And just again. So you can see a very sharp edge in less than one millisecond. Uh, the voltage is going from zero volts to 20 volts. And now let's use my anti-spark. Um, right here's the anti-spark. Uh, we got a connected hooked up to the motor controller. Currently the time it takes is around 40 milliseconds uh, for this thing to turn fully on. That's kind of what I expected from this resistor. And now I actually want to look uh, at the voltage across this resistor. And you can see right here that's around 10 milliseconds, same division of time. 10 milliseconds, so it's around, it takes around 40 milliseconds for the full charging basically to take place. This is actually amazing. So right now I'm measuring the gate voltage of the MOSFET. How long does it take for these MOSFETs to fully turn on? And right here you can see, and you can see that uh, we're now changing the division to, to one second. So it takes a total of around three seconds, three full seconds, not milliseconds, not tens of milliseconds, three seconds for this thing to fully go to like 12 volts. That means that the circuit has more than enough time to fully charge up all the capacitance through this resistor. It's actually shown to work great and I'm really happy that it worked exactly as I calculated it down. Um, if you want to buy the price at Antispark, write me a comment or think about making a shop where you can buy this PCP fully assembled with all the components. But either way, I'm going to open source this project. Uh, I'm going to put this thing on my GitHub and put a link in the video description. So if you want to um, do something with this design yourself, feel free to do so. Um, I hope you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!